Good morning and welcome everyone. Uh, so now we are heading toward the second last day of the Simpa School and uh, the second last lecture of Kai Kupchas. Over to you, lecture number three, Kai Kupchas. Thank you. So today we will talk about non-negative matrix factorization. So we will basically prepare for tomorrow's lecture. So we will talk about um, real uh, algebraic geometry. Actually, we will start with algebraic geometry. So this might be a reminder for many of you. Um, and uh, I would like to start with a, let's say, thought experiment for you. And actually, um, you can already, the people in Lahore can already see a partial on, uh, answer to what I'm going to write. So, The kind of question that we are interested in today and tomorrow is uh, consider the map by two polynomials. So five from R2 to R2 that maps UV to one half U plus um, U times V and one half V minus U cubed. Okay, and the question that I'm going to ask you is what is the image? Uh, under five of the unit ball B. So the unit ball in R2. So all the uh, elements U V such that U squared plus V squared is lesser or equal than one. So I'm question to you, how would you approach this problem? Like, you know, I think the problem is clear to everyone. It's uh, very easy to state, but uh, how would you answer it? If you look at the boundary. Look at the boundary. Um, this is what I would usually do uh, first because maybe boundaries will help. How would you look at the boundary? Like, how would you determine the boundary? Think about it. <laughs> so, um, I think uh, one more relation will be. Um, so, uh, uh, use that relation, use k plus v square is equal to one in the above and drop it to one. So, just um, maybe by using parameterization. Uh, using parameterization of um, the boundary of the unit ball. Um, yeah, that's that's a very good idea. I haven't thought about this. Um, Let's see, it is i theta. Then, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, so these both uh, suggestions go in like the direction of looking at the boundary, right? Um, and um, any any other suggestions? Before I'm going to give you three suggestions how to how to answer this problem. Okay, so if not, then um, so the first idea. And now let me also share the screen. So the very very first idea, and let me make it larger. This idea actually uh, comes from Pablo Parilla. Um, is to sample points in the unit ball. So you can see the first picture uh, over here. So uh, there are like, I think in this case, uh, maybe 100, no, 
uh, actually 10,000 sample points. So this is mathematical code. So the sample points are these uh, uh, black points. And then uh, for each sample point, you um, apply this uh, map that's written on the board. Okay, and then you get this image over here. And the points on the boundary, these are uh, blue. The points in the interior are black. So you can see, um, uh, actually, yeah, so you can see image over here and the boundary maps uh, like the different points over here, but very interesting phenomenon in my opinion is that if you look the boundary of the image over here, then it actually doesn't come from the boundary uh, of the unit fall. It, so if you look like this part of the boundary yeah. of this image here, so this is not blue. Yeah. So meaning that it doesn't come from the boundary of the unit fall, but it comes because there is this folding, mm -hmm. right? Um, well, the folding, um, it doesn't have, so I will answer it, uh, but it's not only due to the cubic equation. So, so the folding can basically, or maybe this, I'm not sure if the folding can happen. No, no even like, uh, let's say, if you think of the example of a real line and the map uh, X squared, then also folding happens yeah. at zero, right? Yeah. So, so it doesn't, uh, basically, if you have a linear map, then folding can't happen. But if you have anything that's not linear, then folding can happen, right? So, so what I'm trying to uh, say here, um, it's really important to somehow realize that at least to me, it wasn't obvious when we started this project in 2016, that you know, there are these boundaries that don't come from the boundaries of your um, pre-image. Okay, so this is one approach, but of course, you know, we are, uh, we are mathematicians, maybe we are not completely happy with this approach because, you know, we get the nice picture, but um, uh, still, uh, yeah, this, this doesn't give us so good answer. Another approach, um, unfortunately, it's a little bit small and I am not sure how to make uh, it's large and let's see. The command plus system work, unfortunately not. So another thing there is resolve command in Mathematica. So from algebraic geometry, maybe some of you are uh, familiar with elimination. And, uh, but now we don't have algebraic varieties, although I'm going to define them. So like I'm uh, rushing a little bit ahead, but here we have inequalities. So we are in the world of real algebraic geometry. And, and in real algebraic, so what we have basically, we have this parameters, uh, U and V, and then we uh, have a map to R squared, maybe where we denote our coordinates by X and Y. And then we want to eliminate this U and V um, and keep X and Y. And so this is called quantifier elimination. And in Mathematica, there is this command resolve that does quantifier elimination. And you can see for this particular example, it gives like this very, very long uh, answer. So it's like some combination of um, equations and inequalities. Um, but I have to warn you, you know, you can't do much larger examples than this example, right? And, and you can then region plot now draws uh, <coughs> what this, resolve command has found here. And, and now you can see the picture of the image. So there is some similarity what you saw here, but now it's really like there are polynomial equations and uh, inequalities um, that are used here. Um, and then, and so what we are going to talk about in the rest of the lecture, so basically the very, what we end the lecture with um, is that it wasn't um, a surprise, let's say that the boundaries um, are polynomials. So, so maybe it's not surprising anyway, but this is a highly non-trivial result in, uh, in real algebraic geometry. And so basically today is let's say a reminder of um, 
very basic algebraic <laughs> geometry and then introduction to real algebraic geometry. So these things cannot be done without uh, Maple or some uh, software? Well, you can, if you're very good, you know, by hand, uh, you can construct definitely Jacobian by hand. Yes. You can find the minors by hand. Um, elimination, okay, you can theoretically do by hand because what's in uh, elimination, you take uh, lexicographic um, um, monomial order. Uh, you construct the Krugner basis, but this means you would have to compute this. So let's say theoretically, yes, if you know all the algorithms behind everything, but maybe you don't want to do it by hand. Uh, I think if one would like to uh, use the Krugner basis, uh, so how should we proceed? X minus the first polynomial, then Y minus the second one, and then. Uh, exactly. And then uh, computing the Jacobian uh, of this. And then in this case, uh, the uh, Jacobian is two by two matrix, I think. So in this case, I think we can actually do this example because I haven't done this particular example, uh, uh, let's say in the last four years. Um, and then I think it's finding the determinant uh, of this one. Um, and then putting the determinant together with the parameterization max and then eliminate so we have three polynomials and then eliminate <coughs> u and v so and also we don't compute the Kramer basis then elimination uh behind the scenes let's say we just use built in uh it computes the Kramer basis because uh you need like um you need Kramer basis for an elimination order, and then you know uh, you keep only these elements of the Kramer basis that are only in the variables that you're interested in. And, you know. When we are doing the Kramer basis, so we are uh, we have to include the third variable too. C is equal to. Uh, in this case, there is no C. So in the example that I showed, there was one more variable. So in this case, it would be four variables: U, V, X, and Y. Okay. okay. But so maybe. I, I wasn't thinking about it, but maybe it's very instructive if we do this example during the tutorial session. So that you know, we really do uh, define these polynomials P and Q, and see see how to do it in practice, because maybe it's maybe it's useful. To know. And yeah, so these pictures that I were showing, this is from a paper together with Ben Sturmfels and Pablo Barilla called "How to Flatten uh, a Soccer Ball." So. Um, from four or five years ago. Okay, so now I'm sorry because I'm going to bore some of you, uh, but just I want to make sure that um, everyone's on the same page before we get to the semi algebraic sets. And because we will talk about boundaries, so we really need to be clear about uh, uh, Tsarisky. Closure. So let R uh, be the polynomial ring. So, so K is a field and it will be um, Q, R, or C. Um, and actually, let's say tomorrow it will be only the field of real numbers. Okay. Uh, so let T be any set of polynomials in R. And their set of zeros. It's called the variety of <laughs> Half one variety, but I will because we won't talk about any other varieties. I will just talk about variety. And it is denoted so it's all the points. 
from Kn such that f of p is zero for all f in t. Okay. And I've already heard that many of you have taken algebraic geometry following uh share, so all of you are familiar with this definition and a couple of more definitions. But this is really a reminder. Um, and let's do a very simple example. So if our T, so let's take K to be the field of real numbers um, and T just Y minus X squared, then we have T. So can anyone tell me uh, what's the right in this case? Yeah, so it's the parabola y equals x squared. Okay. Um, and then this is even simpler. So going back to abstract algebra. So the ideal generated by T and denoted following way is the smallest ideal in R containing T. And R is the polynomial ring. And um, if you have taken algebraic geometry course, then you know that uh, the variety defined by uh, T is equal to the variety defined by the ideal generated by T. So that was the first definition. Sorry, there are a couple of more reminders. And a subset X of uh, <coughs> N is a variety if X is the variety for some uh, set uh, T. And now a question to the audience. Um, can we assume that T is a finite set? And, and why? Sorry, can you say? We are in a Noetherian ring, so we can suppose that. Yeah, so it's uh, by Hilbert basis theorem, we can actually um, assume that T is a finite set uh, for if you consider polynomial rings over an Ethereum rings, but in particular fields. And um, 
the next definition is the reason why I'm recalling you um, these definitions and why I didn't go directly to, uh, let's say, semi algebraic sets. It's because we are going to talk about boundaries. And when we talk about boundaries, we actually talk about risky closures. So, so this is related to uh, what I've been talking about. So the risky topology. So we define that risky topology on KN by taking closed sets to be the varieties. And note that um, I will do an example in, uh, in a moment, but this topology depends on, um, on Kn. So I will do an example um, showing what I mean by this. And uh, a definition that we need later, that's a risky closure uh, of a set X is the smallest variety containing X. Let's, let's do an example. So let's take um, our field to be a field of uh, rational numbers. Then this set plus square root two and minus square root two is a variety in K but we just take plus square root two the set consisting of as uh, plus square root two this is not a variety And in fact, it's a risky closure of Y is uh, X. Because the minimal polynomial of square root two over Q is X squared minus two. Square root two is rational or irrational? Square root two. Is a irrational number. When we are talking about the underlying affine space, affine space so this is going to be uh, Q. Uh, yes, sorry, here K 
if they would consider, and this is what I meant here, the topology uh, depends on the choice of k. If we take k equal to the uh, to r, then y becomes a variety. because we can just take the polynomial x minus square root two. But this is not a polynomial in the polynomial ring over Q. So, so there is really uh, this difference uh, in the topology depending uh, what is K. Okay. X is a variety in Q. So the point scale of Q is not in Q. Right. Oh, um, sorry. Yes. Um, you're completely right. So uh, I'm mixing things up. Uh, what I was, sorry, ignore this example. Uh, so I guess uh, what I was thinking about here uh, from where I, uh, if you consider polynomials, with uh, coefficients in Q, and uh, but we uh, leave ourselves in R. So sorry, this is com completely ignore this. I'm sorry about this. Well, it's still true that uh, Y is a. <laughs> we can we can change the Q scale to then probably you are right. Um, yeah, so this thing like you know, quiet and it's going to be yes. okay. What are the Q scale? Q, uh, oh, sorry. All right. yeah. I, you know, to the valley as well. Let's forget this example. So, so I, uh, so, uh, I took this example and I didn't think about it. So, in actually, it's the paper uh, that we wrote to it on non-negative rank with Bernd um, Sturmfels and Elina Ropava, and there we considered the setting where we uh, changed the coefficients uh, of the polynomial rings, but uh, then we considered the variety always like uh, in R and R C and. And then it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense the way how I introduce things here. So this is where the mistake comes from. So you're all completely right. Uh, so let me erase this. Um, so yeah, sorry about this. Okay, so let me write down the last definition that I have about, um, let's say, classical algebraic geometry, and then we go over definitions in every algebraic geometry. So, given any subset X in KN, uh, we define the ideal <coughs> of X um, by so it's all the polynomials that vanish on all the points uh, of our set X. It's all the F in R such that F of P is equal to zero for all P in X. And the Tsarisky closure that we just defined and we'll denote Tsarisky closure by X bar equals <coughs> Uh, 
uh, variety of the ideal of X. And now we go on with real algebra X geometry. And, in, and you're familiar that, you know, most of the time um, in, let's say, classical algebraic geometry, we work over algebraically closed fields. So, so many results uh, don't necessarily, uh, like Roche balance sets that don't hold, uh, or at least some of them don't hold over not algebraically closed fields. Um, but in real algebraic geometry, it's very important that we have an ordered field so that we can compare the elements. So, um, and in real algebraic geometry, we allow inequalities uh, in addition to equalities. So a basic semi-algebraic set X, which is a subset of R to then, and here we always have R to then, so we don't consider uh, any other fields. Is a subset of the form <coughs> X. That's all the points in Rn such that f of p is zero uh, for all f in t, where t is a finite subset uh, of R, so the polynomial ring in n variables over R, and g of p is greater or equal than zero for all g in s so where s and t are finite subsets of r So this is a basic semi-algebraic set. So this is a building block for uh, general semi-algebraic sets. Does it say that S and T need to be finite? Um, I think yes. Um, I can't give you. A, I, I'm pretty sure it's. Uh, I can't right now come up with an example on spot where you know where we would have uh, infinitely many, um, and we would get like something that's not that we don't want. And then a semi-algebraic set is obtained from basic semi-algebraic sets by taking um, by a finite sequence of uh, taking unions, intersections, and complements. So the rational is not a semi-algebraic set, right? Sorry. Set of all rational numbers is a semi algebraic set. Uh, it's not the semi algebraic set. Yeah. 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 That, that's a good example. <clears throat> So it's a subset of uh, Rn, 
that is obtained. By a finite sequence of unions, intersections, complements of basic semi algebraic sets. And I will do an example in a moment. And I also want to warn you that, like in different uh, references, you know, this could be strict inequality instead for a basic uh, semi algebraic set. So, uh, and this could be, let's say, closed uh, basic semi algebraic set. But for a semi algebraic set, it doesn't really matter because um, when we take complements, then we can get like from um, non strict inequalities, uh, strict inequalities. But, um, and also, one more thing. Uh, an intersection of basic semi algebraic sets is actually always a basic semi algebraic set. Okay, then we just add the uh, add inequalities. Okay, so, but example. So, if we consider the non negative Orton, so X is defined by all the points x and y in R2 such that x is greater or equal than zero and y is greater or equal than zero. So this is a basic semi-algebraic set. Right? So it's of the form that I wrote over uh, here. And actually, we have no equalities, so T is empty set, and S consists of two polynomials. And maybe more interesting, um, if you consider all but the negative orphan, this is a semi-algebraic set, but not the basic semi-algebraic set. So this is all the points y. And usually it's not very easy to show that something is not basic semi algebraic. Mm -hmm. uh, like with this non negative rank, uh, like the semi algebraic sets that we are going to see. Like we believe that they're not basic semi algebraic, but you know, uh, we don't really know how to how to show it. But in this case, probably one would uh, consider again boundaries and see, you know, the boundaries would have to contain um, the Tsarisky closure of boundaries would have to contain this line and this line, and then uh, somehow argue that one, um, you know, one can't get. Um, a basic semi algebraic set using these boundaries. So, not a basic semi algebraic set. And now we get to that theorem that I wanted to get at the beginning of this lecture. In the first example, what is uh, a T is empty set? Yeah, actually, also, um, S, uh, S consists of so. Uh, S and T are subsets of R. That's the polynomial ring uh, in this case in two variables with coefficients uh, in R. 
So maybe let me recall this. So. And in this case, is it clear? Uh, uh, what are the basic, uh, like how to write it, let's say, in terms of the basic semi algebraic sets? Right? It's a union. So the union of X and Y such that uh, X is equal to zero and X and Y such that Y is greater equal than zero. So or corresponds to X. All algebraic sets need not to be semi algebraic, or I think they are. Uh, all, if you consider an R n, uh, then every, every set is semi algebraic because then you just take the uh, S to be empty set. Yeah. So you get a larger class of sets. And now, Theorem, also known as Karski Seidenberg. So the image of a semi algebraic set of polynomial map is semi algebraic. <coughs> By map, you mean regular map? Yes. So just every coefficient um, or like every component of the map is a polynomial map. Yes. Um, and a question to the audience. If I replace everywhere here a semi algebraic set by a variety, is the statement still true? No. No? And why not? Because the dense open set is the image. Yeah, so not, that's not, that's a non -trivial. So this is at least the example that I uh, know the best. So if you consider the hyperbola, that's uh, the variety of x times y minus one, and if you consider the projection, projection, yes. right, to the x coordinate, then you get everything but one point, right? And this is not an alpha right? But of course, uh, it is true that the image of an uh, algebraic variety under a polynomial map is a semi algebraic set. So this is a semi algebraic set, but it's not an algebraic variety. And as a last thing today, I want to give you the definitions. Uh, what's the reason why we like, you know, in defining everything um, and what we will use. 
and tomorrow. And that's connected with the motivating questions that I asked in the beginning. <coughs> so let me yes, I mean, try accept. A point. Um, is an interior point of X if there is an open ball Such that um, if you consider the Tsariski closure of X intersected with the open pole, that this is uh, contained uh, in X. And here, the Tsariski closure is necessary because we could have something that's defined by equalities and uh, inequalities. Okay. Um, we call a point P in X um, a boundary point of X. Um, not an interior point and the set of all such points is called the topological boundary of X Is denoted by and then finally, um, the algebraic boundary. It's a risky closure of the topological boundary. And recall that we noted that's a risky closure by bar. Consider this semi algebraic set. What is the algebraic boundary of the semi algebraic set? Let's say this is the x axis, this is the y axis, and let's say this is the point uh, 1, 0, and 0, 1.
Say again. So it's leaving the boundary lines exist. Exactly. It's the so the topological boundary using the definition that I gave. Sorry, I could just come out of time. So this is the topological boundary. It's just you know um, the uh, the boundary of the triangle. And the algebraic boundary is the Zariski closure of this. So the smallest oh. affine variety <laughs> containing the topological boundary. So it's the extension of this uh, tree line segments. So the algebraic boundary is the union of tree lines. And it's defined in this case by, right, by this polynomial. Okay, so let's stop here. We are out of time. Uh, we will, uh, I will prepare the computation for the uh, motivating question for the tutorial and then tomorrow is the finale of like everything that we have discussed, <laughs> combining uh, all the lectures. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, are there any question in the chat box? Uh, yeah. So, Okay, uh, you mean R deletion is zero is semi-algebraic, but not a variety? She didn't say that. Uh, yes, uh, it was uh, related to this example over yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, that's the yeah. of the hyperbola is R minus zero. So, and I'm claiming this is not an affine variety, but it is a semi-algebraic set. It's a semi-algebraic set, okay. Yeah, okay. and uh, maybe, yeah. And it's uh, it's not the basic uh, semi algebraic set, I believe, and it's a union of uh, complements of two basic semi algebraic sets. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, are there any other questions from the audience? Just a source for a good proof of uh, Tariski's eigenvalue theorem. I know it's very classical, but is there? In some modern books, uh, you recommend some? Um, so my group just worked uh, through the proof, and uh, but I forgot what was the book. I think the classical, let's say, real algebraic uh, book is by uh, Roy. Um, exactly. Uh, but uh, they actually found a different book, and, and I forgot the reference. And, and I think maybe, but I can I can ask it by tomorrow. and. You know, I, I think they found the proof there like easier to follow. Um, yeah, I have to admit I have not worked through the proof myself. It's uh, it's uh, not uh, not trivial. No, I know. I'm just curious about this uh, semi-algebraic structure. So, uh, particularly this particular setup is for the, any field, or does you really require the field to be algebraically closed? No, order. No, or order field. Because we have inequalities. So if we would have complex numbers, inequalities wouldn't make sense. Oh, thank you. But I have to say, I have worked uh, with semi algebraic sets only in over R. But, uh, you know, you need something where the inequalities make sense. <coughs> Any other question from the audience? Like, uh, just curious, uh, one more question. Uh, uh, yeah, in the order field, so it will not include the case of finite fields. And... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not Any other question from the audience? Okay, if this is the case, let us. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not. You start putting another user, I'm not eligible geometry. Can you just We would the most interested we are in the giving the semi algebraic description, and you know, uh, next best thing is the topological boundary. 
But the thing is, we want something that we can approach with algebraic tools. And for example, what I showed you this uh, example in the beginning with the image of a unit ball, like I wouldn't know, like let's say, uh, probably once we have computed the algebraic boundary, we can come up with the topological boundary. But let's say for me, this is the very first step uh, towards, uh, uh, it's just like a tool, you know, uh, towards maybe what we really want to get. So I'm just saying it's more difficult usually to describe the topological boundary than the algebraic boundary, and that it's even more difficult to describe the um, semi-algebraic set than the topological boundary. Yeah, am, I, am I right in saying in that example, so basically you have uh, three hyperplanes? Yes. And the intersection is basically the topological and not the intersection. Uh, sorry, the, uh, the intersection is the, the region. Points. It's the region. It's the region of interest. Exactly. Sorry. Exactly. Region but that's interest. also not always true. If you think back about the first example that we had, then the algebraic boundary intersects the region in the interior. Remember that there was this uh, folding. I actually gave a bit late, so I'm sorry. Oh, you gave a late, okay. So, but uh, I can show you uh, a picture, but <coughs> even this is not true in general, that uh, the topological boundary is the intersection. It's contained in, in, in the intersection of the algebraic boundary and uh, uh, the region we are interested in. Okay, and, and just one, again, because this is not quite this one learning. So let's say that instead of having this kind of a region, we had a, a circular region. That on every point on the circle, I have a tangent hyperplane, so I can describe that these are algebraic objects. So, uh, will that actually be as so all the collection of those tangent hyperplanes? Will that be something similar to? And so, those are all affine. So, in the circle case, actually, the algebraic boundary is just the boundary of the circle. It's uh, because this already is the x squared plus y squared minus one. So it's a, so in this case, uh, the algebraic boundary coincides with the topological boundary. So so you know all things can happen basically. Okay. Yeah, the circle with with the tangent lines that would be a cylinder. Yeah, right? no, like, like for example, if uh, like for example, if I have the proof convexity of this region, so it's basically an intersection of hyperplanes. Hyperplanes are affine and convex, so intersection is convex. So a norm ball is convex. You can prove uh, through simple, uh, uh, like those uh, convex from first principles, but you can also prove that it is an intersection of uh, hyperplanes, uh, supporting hyperplanes. And uh, that reason is also convex. So you can actually trace the boundary of the circle by just moving the hyperplane, and the hyperplane, like, in, like a circular motion. But again, I, I'm not familiar with algebraic geometry, so I'm just trying to relate. And this is, you know, all this supporting hyperplanes, they define the, um, uh, the unit ball, but it's not a semi-algebraic description because there are, uh, there, there are infinitely many of the, you need infinitely many supporting hyperplanes. But in this case, uh, yes, that algebraic boundary is x squared plus y squared, like defined by x squared plus y squared minus one. So, so it's really different things can happen. Yeah. Uh, any question from the IBA side? IBA Karachi? Any question? Uh, no, man, no, no question. Okay. Uh, if this is the case, uh, uh, let's thank Kai for her second lecture, second last lecture. Uh, thank you.